Hi everyone, welcome to another new episode of the Cards and Payments series and today we are going to talk about the payment and processing fees. It's a very important topic. Uh, we are not going to go into um, details of the payment processing fees but at a high level what are the different kind of fees is what we are going to cover in this session. Um, but before we move forward, a humble request to all of you. If you are new to my channel, please consider subscribing my channel. Uh, do also give it a big thumbs up if you think that the content is good uh, and do share it with your friends so they can also benefit out of it. So with that, let's get started. Okay, so when we do a transaction, right, it's sometimes a very tricky process. Um, it doesn't matter if you are a business analyst or say if you are a merchant. Um, many of you who are watching this videos could be a business analyst or they could be merchants. Uh, but there's always this confusion when you're making a transaction or when you are actually um, accepting the payments, right? Um, what is the kind of fee that you're paying in? Um, and is there any way of optimizing that fee and so that you can save some money? And that sometimes um, it becomes um, becomes an issue as, as your business model changes with time, you know? So it's always important to revise these things from time to time and to make sure that you understand um, the various entities that charge you at different points in time when a transaction goes through right from the card holder when he makes the payment until the merchant when he receives the payment into his bank account okay so we'll focus on that uh, so this particular slide says don't pay more than you should uh, and that's precisely why we are talking about this different kind of fee that is involved in the payments processing um, at a very very high level there are basically two different kind of costs the first kind is called as the negotiable cost and the second kind is called as the non-negotiable costs. So as the name says, right, it basically means that um, there are certain costs on which you don't have much control from a, from a merchant perspective, but there are certain costs on which you do have some control and you can try to revise the uh, pricing model uh, from time to time and see, you know, what, what works best for you. Uh, if you look at the pie chart over here, basically there are two different kind of costs um, that are indicated again, like markup costs and base costs, right? So markup costs is basically, or the negotiable um, um, costs and the base costs are basically the non-negotiable costs. Markup costs consider uh, constitute mostly around 25% uh, of the total um, um, amount uh, of the payment fee versus the base cost, which actually constitutes the larger pie uh, in the share and which is about 75%. Um, so let's look into a little bit more detail about these costs, right, and how they constitute. So if you look into this particular um, diagram, this will basically summarize everything for you. Uh, in a very beautiful way yeah and at the end of it you should be having a good idea about these different fees uh, that are being charged from you so at the at the lower end of the spectrum you can see there is a buyer yeah who is making a payment and then at the other end of the spectrum you can see that there is a merchant who is going to accept the payment now what happens between a buyer and merchant is now we will see into this diagram so um the first entity that comes into the picture here is the issuing bank and the issuer processor. And basically they would charge something called as interchange. Now many people have this confusion that whatever the fee that is being charged overall is called as interchange. And, and that's actually not right. Interchange is a, a major section of the fees, but it's not in the entire thing. You know, So there are other components also that constitute the payment processing fees. So here, the issuer, issuer uh, or the issuer processor would charge the uh, interchange, which roughly is around 175 basis points or 1.75% um, of the uh, transaction amount. And that is then followed. So there are some um, things that I mentioned here about this particular step, right? So this is paid to the issuing bank and the issuing processor. This is also called as a state through interchange. So basically, the acquirer will collect it uh, on, on behalf of the issuer and then this is eventually being paid back to the issuer. Um, set This is set by the card networks. This is non-negotiable. So basically, uh, you know, the different uh, card uh, network bodies is who actually set this and they revise it from time to time. Um, it's basically a per transaction processing percentage sort of a calculation or a per transaction fee depends um, what's the kind of model uh, that you're looking at. Uh, this also depends on the card type, you know, and the transaction type um and also the mcc which is the merchant category code so for certain merchants there's a different interchange rate and then for certain merchants there's a different interchange rate so it really depends on a lot of factors and eventually then you decide that this is the slab this is the interchange um in which this particular transaction should fall in now that follows with something called as card network okay um 
and the fee that is associated with the card network, which is also called as assessment. And this is roughly about 0.15% uh, um, of the transaction amount. And, and this is, again, you know, paid to the card networks. For instance, it could be a Visa, it could be a MasterCard, it could be an American Express Discover, it could be any of these um, card network uh, companies. Um, this is, again, a non-negotiable um, type of a fee, which actually goes to the network. Um, and then this is followed by two other um, sort of entities, which is the acquiring bank and the acquiring processor. Um, these are the... Um, the fees that we also refer to as the um, as the markup, uh, yeah, and so it could be a kind, it could be called as the processor fees or the markup fee. It just depends, but this is roughly around 0.5 to 1 percent of the uh, transaction amount. And uh, what it basically um, says on the right hand side is, you know, it's paid to the acquirer bank or the acquiring processor because obviously they are doing the processing on behalf of the merchant. Um, and this is a this is the portion which I showed you in the previous slide. Um, you know that is a negotiable um, uh, section. So uh, if you are looking to negotiate, then this is the um, uh, the uh, the kind of fee that uh, you know you can probably do something about. So um, all of these fee uh, when they total, you know, so you write from the bottom from the interchange to assessments to the markup fee or the processor fee. If you include everything, this is basically called as the merchant discount rate. Yeah, so I have added all of these percentages and we're looking at about 2.9% of the total transaction amount as in the merchant discount rate. So when you, if you are a merchant, you have to factor in this particular MDR uh, or the merchant discount rate, um, you know, while you're setting up your business model or, 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 um, or the transaction. Okay, so let's look at some of the various pricing models. Um, there are uh, four of these for pricing models that I've mentioned here. There could be others as well, but these are the four that are sort of prominent ones. The first one is called as the interchange plus pricing model. Um, here, the markup fee is not affected. Yeah, so it's the same fee irrespective of the type of card and processing. So you, you could actually do an e-commerce transaction. You could do a key in transaction where you actually physically key in the card number, or you can do simply a swipe of the card. Regardless of that, you know, and regardless of the underlying interchange, the processor earns a fixed percentage. So the acquirer um, or the acquired processor will say, I don't care what uh, is the interchange over here. Um, you know, interchange is something that I collect and I give it back to the issuing uh, bank, but my pie is fixed, you know, so I get this fixed percentage. So that is called as interchange plus pricing. Yeah, so interchange is fixed. And then on top of interchange, you have this differential, which you actually pay to the processor. The second one is also called as a subscription membership. Um, yeah, so basically what it basically uh, says is um, it, instead of a percentage markup per, per transaction, I would probably charge a flat fee. So there are certain businesses which sort of work on a subscription model, right? So monthly subscriptions, for example. And for them, uh, it makes more sense to get um, more penetration in the market uh, if they have a flat fee sort of a model. Yeah, so uh, they, that, that sort of helps them as well uh, from a business perspective. So that is uh, the subscription or the membership model. Then the third is a tiered model, right? So it's basically a model where you have different tiers. Um, generally speaking, you look at three tier uh, sort of a pricing, but this could again vary. Um, so if you actually read a little bit more on this, there could be other different kind of tiers. But uh, basically I'm referring here uh, as a three tier model where you look at the qualified, mid qualified and the non qualified transactions. So what basically it means is, um, let's say the transaction was done when the card holder was physically present and the card was physically present. You basically qualify that as a, you basically call that as a qualified uh, tier uh, transaction. If uh, the card was not physically present um, and maybe the card holder was not physically present, maybe it's an online transaction, uh, but all of the details, for instance, um, the registered address of the card holder, etc., they all match in the verification. Then we call it as a mid-qualified transaction. And if uh, it's an online sort of a transaction, but there is a, a verification failure or say, you know, the verification doesn't match, then we call it as the non-qualified transaction. And the last one is the flat rate model, which is basically um, a model where you charge a flat price, a flat rate for all the transactions. Because what happens is that there are certain businesses which are not um, big businesses and the, the volume is also not very high and it wouldn't be a good business idea for them to take the overhead costs of maintenance, you know, and the monthly fee that is being charged every month. So rather than that, 
what they do is so for example if you enter into a model with uh, um, an online um, acquirer for ex for example stripe uh, or maybe paypal then it becomes uh, difficult for them to to sustain and pay them the monthly cost along with the uh, transaction pricing so what they do is they enter into something called as a flat price model where they sort of pay a fixed flat rate every month so this is suitable for low volume businesses okay so with that we come to an end of uh, this uh, topic about uh, different kind of uh, payment processing fees i hope you like this video and uh, would have got some insights about uh, the different kind of fees that are applicable when a transaction is processed um, if you have a comment please uh, leave it in the comment section if you have any feedback please leave it in the comment section i'm more than happy to pick it up from there uh, if you wish to connect with me on linkedin uh, the link to my linkedin profile would be in the description of this video so please do um, consider connecting as well um, and with that i will take your leave i'll see you once again in on the next video um, on an interesting topic once again uh, until then take care bye